Have you ever tried to collaborate with your colleagues on a data flow? I mean, to actually work together within a single data flow. I'm not talking about all that taking over shenanigans. If you are not running a one-man Power BI developer show, you are probably well aware of this error message and the underlying limitation. But what can you do if you are part of the team and you must share the development workload? Well, this is the topic of today's video. And even if you are the only report creator within the team, you should stay till the end to learn how to share all the smarts you have implemented in the data flow with others within your organization. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons so you wouldn't miss my Power BI tutorials. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Currently, there is a major limitation with the Dataflow authoring experience, or at least I think there is some space to improve. A Dataflow can only be modified by the Dataflow owner. In layman terms, only one user can make any changes to a data flow. This makes teamwork extremely difficult, especially in large organizations, where a team of report creators or developers might want to work on a data flow or data set deemed to be the ultimate source of truth. As always, there is a workaround. It might not be ideal, but it works, and I like to use this technique whenever I work with others or when I want to share my data flows or data flow logic with others. Let's head over to Power BI service so I can show you. Here I am within my Dataflow 101 workspace and I'm logged in as Bill. When I click on the Dataflow, I can see the tables. However, as soon as I hit the Edit Tables button, the dreaded error message pops up. As Bill is not the owner of this Dataflow, he cannot edit it. Let me switch over to my account. As the owner of the Dataflow, I can easily open it and click on the Edit Tables button. Then my tables with all the transformation steps pops up. Let's say that I take some leave or just need to work on a different project, but I need to ask Bill to make some changes to the products table. Let's say remove a few columns as we no longer need them. Sounds like a super easy task, right? If you have ever been requested to do something like this, hit the like button. Come on, I can wait. Firstly, I need to share this data flow with Bill. But even though he's an admin within the workspace, he won't be able to edit the data flow. I still think it's a bit of an oversight from the Power BI team. So to fix this problem, I, the owner of the data flow, need to export all the details of this data flow. I can do that by clicking on the three dots and exporting JSON. I'm not going to spend too much time on this text, but essentially all information about our data flow is here. All the tables, data sources, references, data transformation steps, and so on. If you are really keen or feel comfortable reading JSON files, you can do heaps more with this, but it's not part of today's tutorial. So I have the JSON file and I can share that with Bill. Then Bill can come to our workspace, click on new and data flow. Instead of defining new tables and replicating everything that we have so far, all he needs to do is to click on the import model button. This step allows him to use the current state of our data flow meaning that he will have an editable version of the live data flow. As I use SharePoint folders and files for this demo, Bill needs to update his credentials, but a simple login will be enough. Please keep in mind that this step might also be necessary for other connectors within the data flow. So ensure that whoever tries to modify the data flow will have access to all the underlying data sources. And after that, Bill can open the replica data flow and make those changes we agreed on. First step in the process is done. Bill has a copy of the data flow and he made some changes to the products table, just deleting a few columns. So, how do these changes will apply to the live version? Well, again, it is a little bit funky process, but there are potentially two ways of handling it. Let's head back to the service. The first one, and the one I would suggest doing, is copy pasting the modified M code into a notepad or Word document and sending it back to the owner of the live data flow. 
This way it is a pretty straightforward and quick task for the owner. Just like that. And now I can save and close this and all the changes that Bill has made will be part of the live data flow. Then of course Bill needs to clean up after himself. I mean delete the replica data flow. The other solution is much, much more complex than the first one. It requires downloading the live data set from the service then changing the data flow connections in the PBIX file to the new live data flow and republishing the data set and the report. This method is a million times more time consuming and it means that every time someone else modifies the data flow, relinking data sets to data flow will be required. I think we can all agree that this is suboptimal. I would only suggest this method if there were lots of changes and it would make sense to keep the pre-modified version of the data flow as well. And this is how you can co-author a data flow or share a data flow with others right now. While we wait for Microsoft to deliver an out-of-the-box experience. It works, or I should rather say, you can make it work, but it's not as simple as allowing a group of users read-write access to an existing data flow. It also means that migrating a data flow from one workspace to another is possible using the same export-import JSON file method. Based on my experience, the mcode copy-pasting is a super fast and relatively elegant solution to this problem. However, I have also done complete relinking of datasets to data flows. It highly depends on the number of changes and the breadth of those changes. Moving from version 1.2 to 1.1 would not prompt the creation of a backup data flow. However, moving to 2.0 with additional tables and new transformation steps might be too big of a risk of losing precious data. At the end of the day, you will know when it is a smart move to save or keep a backup of your data flow. Did you know that you can do this in data flow? Have you ever tried co-authoring a data flow? If so, what worked the best for you and your team? Let me know in the comment section below along with any other questions you have about data flows. Thanks for staying till the end. I hope that this video helped you a lot and you can start replicating this idea in your report. Oh yeah, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!